Friends, Raiders, Appalachians, and everyone in between, welcome back to part two of our Atlantic City Developer Deep Dive. Last week we covered the history, location, and the people of Atlantic City. If you missed it, you can go ahead and watch it somewhere in this general vicinity. Our editing team will put a clickable link for you, and it'll take you right there. It's magic. Not really magic. It would be fun if it was. I'm your host and community manager, Lady Devon, and this week I am joined by Christian Shepard, lead animator. Hi. Stephanie Cates, gameplay engineer. Hello. And Jay Espinoza, our lead systems designer. Hi there. Hi, Christian, Stephanie, Jay, thank you all so much for taking time out of your super busy day to be interrogated, I mean, interviewed <laughs> about the new and exciting things coming to Atlantic City. So let's just jump right into things. We know the lore, we know the people, and the location of Atlantic City. Can you tell us anything about the new enemies that we can expect to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against? Absolutely. This time around, we have the Overgrown. The Overgrown are a natural threat to Atlantic City, and they usually travel in these mysterious packs. We don't know too much about them. They take over bodies. A little scary. They aren't sentient, and their only goal is to spread out and cover the world with plant life. Secondly, we also also have the Jersey Devils coming into play here. So New Jersey, of course, you're going to run into a couple new cryptids here. The Jersey Devil is running around, running rampant, looking around for some lesser devils. With the Overgrown being a brand new enemy group that we've never seen in a Fallout franchise before, what were the unique challenges that you face setting them apart from other enemies that our player base has already encountered? This time around, we wanted them to be a little more dependent on one another and have a very collaborative sort of attack style. So one of the challenges that we faced was to kind of alter the existing AI behavior in order to get certain variants of the pack to go and heal other Overgrown. So that's some new AI that you're going to see in there, which really changes up the gameplay. In addition to having kind of focused AI on just debuffing the player. So yeah. Lots of new behaviors there. Do you have any strategies for us in battling these enemies? With the Overgrown as creatures, they really like to pile on in the attack. What I would do specifically is always keep looking over your shoulder because you never know where they're gonna come from. They may take you by surprise. Keep your head on a swivel. Definitely. So Christian, since there is so much content coming to Atlantic City. We've had to separate this into, into two separate releases. So can you tell us how that impacts the new cryptids that we'll run into? So the moment we knew that we were visiting Atlantic City, the first thing that we thought of was the Jersey Devil. That was just a given right there. But we wanted to break this down into something that was fun for the player and engaging. So when we first visit Atlantic City, we're going to encounter a lesser version or a lesser devil, which is a smaller devil that hunts in packs. It's very intimidating and can be more, more sneaky. They will come like raptors from the sides in at you. So we wanted an encounter that exemplified what a devil was, but it wasn't the Jersey Devil yet. The Jersey Devil, however, we will encounter at another instance or visit to Atlantic City. But as opposed to being an expedition, we will probably encounter the Jersey Devil in the main quest line. That's the big bad boss. And the Jersey Devil is just intimidating. I mean, the name just really implies it all right there. It is a devil. It's just scary, mean, fiery red with fire in its eyes. He lives up to his name. He's definitely unique as far as our enemies go. I have chills already. I know our player base is super excited to see him in game. The Jersey Devil has always been one of the top requested cryptids from our community to join 76. So we are very excited for that. So now that we know what kind of threats that we can expect, expect to run into, what about the rewards that we get for surviving? <laughs> uh, let me tell you, we've been hard at work. <laughs> yeah, you have been heard. We have been hard at work to really assess the reward pools, what players are kind of trending towards, and what they really want out of their rewards here. So we have three missions that are jam-packed with rewards. We're looking at interactable casino games that you can play at your camp. So you can go spend some caps and maybe earn some caps or set up your own little areas there. And you can also play with them in Atlantic City while you are earning them through the expedition. So we have those in addition to a whole bunch of casino themed skins with light ups and emissives. We have plushies, of course, are going to be there. You can earn them in game along with some that you can buy in the shop. But we do have a Jersey Devil plush that you can earn. And 
a new armor. It's been a very long time, but we are coming in with a new base armor that you can earn and equip, and it will give you a set bonus. So Stephanie, this year we have seen a huge amount of quality of life updates from weapon description updates to free cam while building. What other changes will come to the game with Atlantic City? Yes, I'm excited to share a few camp quality of life updates we've been working on to bring more quality to your lives. So free cam in camps has already made a splash for our builder community. It empowers the way you build camps, and now we want to use it to enrich the way you share camps. So with this update, you'll be able to enter free cam in photo mode while in your camps. So we can't wait to see your camps from a bird's eye view with all your filters, frames, poses, and of course it's untethered from the character. It will have its smooth cinematic controls, move through camp object collision, so you can create media of your camp to show it off in its best light. I know at least 10 of our community members who are big into the role play side of things that will be so excited to see the free camp in video form. It's going to really elevate the content that they create in the, the role play stories. Yes, we love seeing all the community camps and we can't wait to see them in this new way. It will make a huge difference. So the second feature we are adding in this patch, the ability to control the weather to create the best light for your camps. Weather forecasts all over Appalachia are predicting a 100% chance of not raining out your meat wheat cookout, unless you want it to. You will be able to build new weather station objects in your camp to generate your choice of weather within your build area for everyone to enjoy. So if it's looking too sunny and blissful for a winter wonderland camp, you can challenge your overcrowded power grids with the snowstorm. Your choice of weather can really complete the aesthetic for your camp builds. We're really excited to see this both in images and in living artwork in Appalachia. That's going to completely elevate the camp building game. I don't know about you guys, but I always make the scariest looking camps that I possibly can. And if it's sunny, it just ruins the vibe. It needs to be rainy. I need rad storms everywhere and snow every year. Every year our community wants us to add snow to the game. So there you go. Seriously, though, if you're building a Halloween camp and it's bright and sunny, it just doesn't work. So a weather system is perfect. Some of my favorite submissions from the community have been the ones with dark drama. And you just can't really see that in the game. You can only see it in images. So now I'm excited to be seeing it live. This is a question for all three of you. Go ahead and take your time on the answers here. But what's your personal favorite addition to the Atlantic City update? Let's start with Jay. I would have to say the Showstopper shotgun. It's super cool, very casino-like. It definitely gives me that fun casino theme, very upbeat and happy. What about you, Christian? For me, I actually have two things. And one is the Jersey Devil because I have been living with the Jersey Devil now for the past several months. I know this creature very, very well. Every single motion, move, everything that it, it's supposed to do, I'm right there. In addition to the Jersey Devil, one of my favorite additions for Atlantic City is the foundation for what Atlantic City really is, and that's the addition of the casino. My goodness, we've been talking about adding a casino to the game for years. This was famously something that we added to Game Jam over five years ago. One of the famous Bethesda Game Studio Game Jams was created that way. So now that we're finally able to implement a casino to the game, I've been able to go in and, and help create animations for every single slot machine, roulette table, horse racing game, anything that you would have in a regular casino, we have there available for us to play right now. So that means you can make it so my character wins every time, right? Now you're just going to ruin it for me now, aren't you? Luck of the draw. It's all about the chance. <laughs> How are you, Stephanie? What do you think? Well, I'm the Jersey Devil's biggest fan. He is the coolest enemy. He really fits with the environment. And it's really this whole moment that you get to experience when you come across him. Any of you have any fun behind the scenes stories to share? Because I'm sure you got something with the animations for the Jersey Devil. Yeah, as we were going through the concepting stage, trying to figure out what this was going to look like, what, what it was going to do, we were going back and forth. Is it going to run around on all fours? Is it going to run around on, on two legs? And so I was literally back here in front of the camera with the whole team watching, just running around acting like a wild man because we were trying, maybe it runs like this. And then I get feedback. Maybe it runs like this or it attacks like this. And so once we... <laughs> made a fool of ourselves enough, then we were able to really kind of zero in and, and dial in on what this thing actually looks like and, and does. And we ended on something that's terrifying. You had some other people joining in there too. Like the sys oh, yeah. designers started up and they were like, no, I think it should be this. And <laughs> Once you start acting in front of the camera, it becomes infectious. Everyone joins in. <laughs> 
Jay, Stephanie, do you guys have any fun behind the scenes stories on par with running as a Jersey Devil? Running with the Jersey Devil, per se? I don't think anything really amounts to that, but on my off hours, I put anime eyes on the creatures. <laughs> Just really make emojis out of them. You have Jersey Devil Uwu. Little pink cheeks and sparkles. Yeah, the little flushes. <laughs> Stephanie, what do you got? We have a lot of fun with camp building and in general behind the scenes. I will say the Mallard Duck camp object is near and dear to our hearts. So I'll be looking for that in all of your camps. So the last question that I have for all of you today, I know you're very busy, so I want to let you get back to your work day and stop gabbing your ear off. But this is a very, very important one that all of our community is just up in arms about. So I want you to think very carefully about your answer. Is cobbler a pie? No. It's not. I am envisioning a delicious and untapped market in pie cobbler fusion though. So gotta find some of those. This is very polarizing. This is a polarizing question <laughs> because I love pie and I love cobbler. Are they the same? No, they're not. Cobbler is a casserole. Oh, a casserole. That's a new Crumb on top. <laughs> I haven't heard that one yet. Is no. cobbler a casserole? Don't come for me. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Sorry, Jake. What is a cobbler? <laughs> Probably like... should have looked it up. It's, I'm going to go with you a pie. <laughs> wow. You know what? Yeah, just put one on the other team. Somebody's got to fight for the pie. Most of the devs now, I think we've we've kind of pushed into the it's not a pie category, but there are still a lot of players who are like, what are you talking about? It's totally a pie. And I love a cobbler. A cobbler, Jay, just so you know, a little bit of fruit kind of mashed together. You put a crumb over the top, a, a breading. What is it? What do you put on top of it? Pastry? Top See, pastry. you don't know either. And yeah. you bake it and you eat it because it's a delicious dessert. But it's not a pie. Never had to define cobbler before. <laughs> but it, no, it is not a pie. <laughs> I'm Team I love Stephanie. the gray food areas. Like, is a hot dog a sandwich? A cereal soup? These are the questions that keep me awake at night. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, I will let you get back into the casino. Thank you again so much, Christian, Jay, Stephanie, for joining us. We really appreciate having you on this dev dive. Yes, thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. For everybody watching right now as well, our journey to Atlantic City begins on December 5th. To all of our now 16 million vault dwellers out there, we found out at 16 last week. We will see you in Appalachia.